Many people ask, and I've been asked this before, why do you guys put your face on the ground? What are you doing? What is this prostration? You know, this prostration or sujood in the Arabic language is not something new. If you look, for example, in the Christian New Testament, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39, you'll find Jesus described there as prostrating and beseeching his Lord for his bounties. In the Old Testament, we find the great prophets, such as Abraham and Moses and David, peace be upon all of them, described as prostrating and beseeching their Lord. What this shows us is that Islam is not a new message. Islam is not the invention of Muhammad, peace be upon him. But Islam is the message of all of the prophets. And the prophecy of Muhammad is the commonization of that prophetic message. It represents the zenith of the prophetic message to humanity. Now, what I would like you to do is try to imagine a way that you would show your submission to God. What would you do? What act would you, would you exhibit if you wanted to show your submission to God? Is there any greater act than the act of prostration? I challenge you to prostrate to your Creator. Malcolm X, a famous convert to Islam said, the most difficult thing he had to do when he became a Muslim was to destroy the arrogance in his soul and prostrate to his Lord. And he said the reason that it was difficult was not because of his arrogance, but he knew that once he prostrated to his Lord and he tasted the sweetness of that prostration and submission, he would never prostrate to anything else again. And he, Jesus, went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. The Bible, Matthew 26, 39. A Muslim is supposed to pay a financial obligation called zakah. All Muslims should spend 2.5% of their cash savings that were unused for a whole year on the poor, the needy, the homeless, and the orphans. In the early ages, zakah played a major role in freeing slaves. Muslims used it to buy slaves and free them on the spot. 5 to 10 percent of any agricultural income. 5 percent is the percentage applied on those who have irrigation systems. 10 percent is the percentage applied on those who have no irrigation systems, but they depend on rain because they don't have much costs coming out of their pockets. 20 percent of any extracted resources or minerals, like petroleum, which means that governments, before they go buy arms and weapons for their armies, according to this ritual, they should spend at least 20% of their resources on the poor, the needy, the hungry people, and the homeless. And guess what? This is not a charity. Zakah is the right of the poor on the rich. Muslims do spend in charity, which what they spend in addition to the zakah. One of the traditions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is spend with your right hand what your left hand doesn't know, which means without showing off, do it with sincerity. Muslims fast the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month in the lunar calendar. In Ramadan, Muslims do not eat, drink, nor engage in any sexual activity from dawn till sunset. At dawn, one controls himself from approaching the lawful, eating, drinking, or any sexual activity with his wife. At sunset, he can practice any of that again. And this happens 30 times. At dawn, one controls himself. By sunset, he can practice any of that again. And next day, control. Practice, control, practice. Do you see what I'm doing? Looks like a workout. After 30 days, one becomes behind the wheel driving this body, not his body driving him. He becomes in control of his stomach and his sexual organs. 
Fasting is a ritual of worship that enhances your patience and perseverance through the discipline. Allah said in the Quran about fasting, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those before you that you might guard yourselves. Hajj or pilgrimage is an obligation once in a lifetime only on those who are financially and physically able. It shows the universality of this religion. Last year, I did pilgrimage with 2.5 million Muslims. We were all moving together from one place to the other, eating together, worshipping together, praying together, and wearing the same simple clothes together. Anyone besides you can be a millionaire, an owner of a chain of restaurants in his country, or a very poor person. Nobody knows, simply because we are all the same. Hajj has changed the lives of so many people, like Malcolm X, who struggled for the rights of blacks in the United States and suffered from discrimination and racism, which in turn led him to have a negative perception of white people. After performing Hajj, he changed. He wrote a letter to his loyal assistants in his newly formed Muslim mosque in Harlem, asking them to duplicate it and distribute it to the press. He wrote, In pilgrimage, during the past 11 days here in the Muslim world, I have eaten from the same plate and drank from the same glass with fellow Muslims whose skin is the whitest of white their eyes are the bluest of blue, their hair is the blondest of blonde, and in their actions, and in their words, and in their deeds, I felt the same sincerity of the black people of Nigeria, Sudan, and Ghana. Peace, justice, and security can be attained only when man knows the purpose of his creation. That purpose is to turn to one's creator, to turn to the one and only God, Allah.